Good afternoon. My name is Danny Britton. I'm a third year medical student. And today I would like to examine both of your knees. Thank you. So this will involve you having your knees exposed like they are at the moment. And then I'll have a look at your knees, ask you to do some walking, and then do some movements with your knees on the couch. Is that okay with you? Yep, that's okay. That's great. I'm just going to wash my hands. And do you have any pain in your knees at the moment? I've got a small little bit of pain just um, on my knee there. Okay, so a small amount of pain on your right knee. Is that on the inside? Yep, that's right. Okay, that's fine. If you feel any pain during the examination, please let me know. Um, it may be important to carry on just to try and find out the source of the pain. But of course, if it's too painful for you, then we can stop. Thank you. Okay. If you can just stand up for me now. Yeah. So I'm just going to start with inspection of the knees on the front. I'm looking for any scars. I can see a scar on the right knee there. Is that from falling over? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's a traumatic scar on the right knee. And I can't see any obvious swelling. The muscle distribution looks normal. No obvious rashes. And I can't see any obvious bulgous or varus deformities of the knee joints. Um, could you just face the curtain for me that side? So I'm looking naturally now, and I can't see any obvious hyperextension of the knee joint. And again, no scars or obvious swelling. And can you just face the wall for me now, please? I'm looking at the posterior side of the knee joints now. Uh, no obvious swellings um, or redness of the skin or any scars there. Okay, that's good. If you can just um, walk over to this table now for me. Assessing the patient's gait, doesn't seem to be any obvious antalgic gait um, or any obvious pain on walking. That's good. And now, if you can just sit up on the couch for me and lie back. Are you comfortable there? Yep. Okay, good. So, I'm going to do a closer inspection now with the patients on the couch. Again, they the same things scarring or swellings and deformities, and there's, there's nothing of note on closer inspection. I'm going to feel around the joints now for any obvious temperature changes which may suggest inflammation of the joints, and the temperature feels normal. Okay. So I'm now going to test for any effusion of the knee joint by performing the patella tap test. And that's normal on the right side, and normal on the left as well. And I'm going to do a second test for effusion of the knee joint called the bulge test now. normal that side and that side okay that's good and if you can just bend your knees slightly for me so your heels are on the couch that's good and I'm just going to feel around your knee joint now and um, please tell me if you have any pain so I'm going to start with the patella Any prominences, so the tibial tuberosity, and the head of the fibula there, which is that lateral there. Okay, we'll do some on the side. Feeling for the patella, patella tendon, collateral ligaments, and joint spaces, tibial tuberosity, and head of the fibula there. Okay. No pain there at all on the knee back? That was fine, no pain there. Okay, good. So now I'm going to ask, run through some movements with you. Um, so first of all, I'd just like to see your range of movement without any uh, support from me or anything like that. So if you can just straighten this knee first and just bend your right knee as, far, as much as you can and straighten for me and do the same on the left side. Okay, so active movement seems to be normal, normal range between 0 and 140 degrees. So now I'm just going to do the same movement, but this time I'd like you to just give me all of the weight of your leg and just let me do the movement for you. Just relax. Okay, so I'm testing for passive flexion extension and feeling for crepitus as well at the same time. There's slight crepitus there. And again on this side, if you just let me take control of your leg and give me all of the weight. Okay, no crepitus there and passive flexion extension is normal. I'm just going to test for hyperextension. I'm lifting the patient's heels off the bed one side at a time. So lifting the right side and looking for any hyperextension of the knee, and there's none there. And the same on this side. No hyperextension there. Okay, good. 
now going to test active movements. So if you could bend your knees for me again and put your heels on the couch. That's it. I'm just going to sit here and pull your legs towards me. If you could just keep them where they are. Okay, so that's good um, resistive movements there on um, flexion. And if you can just push your, try to straighten your legs for me while I push towards you. Okay, that's good. Resisted extension is normal. Any pain there at all on any of those movements? Okay, that's good. And finally, I'm just going to do the special test for the knee exam. So the first one is t checking for laxity of the posterior cruciate ligament by looking to see if there's any sag of the tibial tuberosities in the knee, and there's none there. And now I'm just going to perform the anterior draw test, so the test for laxity of the anterior cruciates. Just by, if you can just keep your leg there, I'm just going to pull the leg towards me and feel for any laxity, and there isn't any there. And so on the side. Okay, that's good. And the final special test is testing for laxity of the lateral ligaments. Um, if you can just straighten your legs for me. I'm just going to lift this leg up to about 10 degrees. You can just relax there. I'm just going to push the knee joint in the horizontal plane, testing for the laxity of the collateral ligaments. Okay, that's good. And we do the same on this side, so bend to 10 degrees. There's no obvious laxity there. Okay, that's good. So that completes the examination. Thank you for your time. And I'm just going to wash my hands and report my findings now. To complete the examination, I would suggest, if indicated, to perform examinations of the joints above and below the knee joint, so that would be the ankle and the hip, and if I detected any fluid in the knee joint, I would perhaps aspirate and send that off for analysis. Okay, thank you.